Section 5.2, verifying trigonometric identities. Here are the tools that we have in order to verify these identities. We have the reciprocal identities, we have the quotient identities, and we have some Pythagorean identities that we can use. Verify that tangent squared plus 1 over 1 minus sine squared is equal to secant to the fourth. Now we want to prove that this is actually a true statement, that these are actually true. In order to do that, we're going to pick the more complicated side and turn it into the more simple side, if we can distinguish that. And I think clearly on this one, this is the more complicated side. Tangent squared x plus 1, tangent squared plus 1, is the same as secant squared. The top becomes secant squared theta, or I guess in this case it's really secant squared x. The denominator is, uh, that turns into cosine squared. If we minus over the sine squared, we get 1 minus sine squared. <clears throat> That's equal to cosine squared. And then uh, that's supposed to be equal to secant to the fourth of x. Secant is 1 over cosine squared x. And that's over cosine squared x. And that's supposed to be equal to secant to the fourth. Well, we can multiply the top and bottom by cosine squared x to get rid of the complex fraction. That gives us 1 over cosine to the fourth of x, which is actually equal to secant to the fourth. 1 over cosine to the fourth is secant to the fourth. And we have it proved or verified. Uh, on the other one, we have verify that 2 minus cosine squared is equal to 1 plus sine squared. I'm not sure if I can really pick a more complicated one. Maybe the left is a little bit more complicated because of the 2, but uh, in this case, it really wouldn't matter. But let's pick the left side. We can write 2 minus cosine squared is the same as 1 minus sine squared of x. And 2 minus 1 is 1, and minus minus is plus sine squared x, and that is the same as 1 plus sine squared x. So some of these require several steps. Some of them are just one or two steps. Verify that negative 2 cotangent of x is equal to, uh, well, the right side here. I think clearly the right side is the more complicated side. So let's use that side. Let's use the right side and try to turn it into the left side. And we're going to do that by using common denominator. Let's multiply this one by 1 minus cosine x on top and bottom, and this one by 1 plus cosine x on the top and the bottom. That's equal to, if we distribute the sine x through, we have sine x minus sine of x cosine of x, and then minus sine of x plus sine of x cosine of x. And that's all over the common denominator. And the common denominator is, our, it's these two multiplied together. Now that's the difference of two squares. Uh, so we have one minus cosine squared of x, which is equal to sine of x minus sine of x. That goes away, that's zero. But then we have negative sine cosine minus sine cosine. That's negative 2 sine cosine x over, and then this right here, 1 minus cosine squared is the same as sine squared x. So you, you start to see it develop. You kind of see that negative 2 starting to develop uh, and be that left side. Now that's equal to one of the sines cancel, and we have negative 2 cosine of x over sine of x, and cosine over sine is cotangent. So negative 2 cotangent of x. And that's exactly what the left side is. Verify that one, well, that left side is equal to the right side. And the left side is more complicated. Let's try common denominator again. Uh, we multiply this one by 1 plus cosine of x. And we multiply this one by sine of x on top and bottom. Uh, when we foil these two together, we get 1 plus 2 cosine of x plus cosine squared x and then plus sine squared x. And that's all over the common denominator, which is sine of x times 1 plus cosine of x. 
cosine squared plus sine squared, that's equal to 1, and then 1 plus 1 is 2. We have 2 plus 2 cosine of x over sine of x times 1 plus cosine of x. And that's supposed to be equal to 2 cosecant of x. We can factor out a 2 on top and get 1 plus cosine of x over sine of x times 1 plus cosine of x. And now the 1 plus cosines cancel, and we get 2 over sine of x, which is cosecant of x. And that's, uh, well, it's 2, excuse me, 2 cosecant of x. So 2 is there, which is the same as 2 cosecant of x. Verify that sine of x over 1 minus cosine is equal to cosecant of x plus cotangent of x. And you can kind of pick and choose as to which one is the more complicated side. Let's say the left is more complicated. If I choose the left, I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 1 plus cosine of x. We have sine of x times 1 plus cosine of x all over. Uh, we get 1 minus cosine squared of x. When we foil the denominator, we get the difference of two squares. Then that gives us sine of x times 1 plus cosine of x all over 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared of x. Now one of the sines cancel out, and we get 1 plus cosine of x over sine of x. And now we can use a kind of reverse common denominator. We have 1 over sine of x plus cosine of x over sine of x with common denominator. And it uh, looks like I'm kind of running out of room here. 1 over sine of x is equal to cosecant of x. And cosine over sine is cotangent of x. And that's exactly what we wanted it to equal, cosecant plus cotangent. Let's do the same thing on this one. Let's say we start with the left side of this one, and we're going to multiply by secant of x plus 1. Secant of x plus 1. We have sine of x times secant of x plus 1 over secant squared x minus 1. This is the difference of two squares. Secant squared x minus 1 is equal to tangent of x. We have sine of x. Oh, uh, times secant of x plus 1, and this is equal to tangent squared x by the Pythagorean identities. We have sine of x times secant of x plus 1, and that's over sine squared of x over cosine squared of x. And then we can multiply the top and bottom by cosine squared. Let's see, multiply cosine squared, cosine squared x. And we get uh, those cancel out. And not only does that cancel out, but one of the sines cancels out. We get cosine squared x times secant x plus 1 all over sine of x. Let's look at what we want. We want cotangent plus cosine cotangent. Let's, uh, let's multiply the cosine squared through. We have cosine squared x secant of x plus cosine squared x all over sine of x. Secant is 1 over cosine. Uh, we have, if we write all the steps out, that's times 1 over cosine of x plus cosine squared x all over sine of x. One of these cosines, that's going to cancel out. We get cosine of x plus, and I can write cosine squared, cosine x times cosine x. And that is all over sine of x. Well, if we do that reverse common denominator again, we get cosine x over sine x plus cosine x times cosine x over sine of x. Cosine over sine is cotangent of x. And then cosine over sine is cotangent. Let's see. Let's use this cosine right here. We have cosine of x here 
and then cosine over sine is cotangent of x. And that's exactly what we were after. Verify that these two equal each other. And on this one, I think we'll pick the right side because I can work with this cosecant squared. Cotangent squared plus 1 is equal to cosecant squared. I can write 2 minus the cosecant squared is the same as cotangent squared plus 1. And then we're all over 1 minus cotangent of x. 2 minus 1, you know, we, we would distribute that negative 1 through as 1. And then we have minus cotangent squared x all over 1 minus cotangent x. On the top, we can factor that into 1 minus cotangent of x, 1 plus cotangent of x by the difference of two squares, and that's all over 1 minus cotangent of x. Well, the 1 minus cotangents cancel, and we're left with 1 plus cotangent of x. Now we're going to try to look, we're going to look at what we're after. We're after this right here. I need to get some tangents in this somehow. This is equal to 1 plus 1 over tangent of x. That's the same thing. Cotangent is 1 over tangent. They're reciprocals of each other. That's the same as tangent of x over tangent of x plus 1 over tangent of x. 1, if I multiply the top and bottom by tangent, we get tangent over tangent. And that's equal to tangent of x plus 1 over tangent of x, and that's exactly what we were after. Verify that the left side equals the right side, and the left side is much more complicated. So let's use the left side. Uh, let's turn everything into sines and cosines. That's cosine x times 1 over cosine squared x times sine of x over cosine x minus cosine of x times sine to the third x over cosine to the third x. We're trying to get all of that to cancel out to just sine of x. On uh, the left side of this minus, we have cosine of x sine of x over cosine to the third x, then minus cosine x sine to the third x over cosine to the third x. We have a common denominator. Now we can write cosine of x sine of x minus cosine of x sine to the third x all over cosine to the third x. On the top, I notice that we can factor some things out. We can factor out a cosine and a sine. We have cosine of x sine of x times 1 minus the cosines factored out and one of these sines is factored out. We have sine squared x. And now that is all over cosine to the third x. We have cosine x sine x times 1 minus sine squared is cosine squared x all over cosine to the third x. Now on top we have cosine to the third x times sine of x all over cosine to the third x. Those cancel out and we're left with sine x.